This video is a continuation of the control flow notebook, and we will be discussing the while, for, and repeat statements, along with the break and next keywords. The while statement repeats the execution of a statement or a compound statement, as long as its conditional expression evaluates is true. If we look at the flowchart here, we start with the while keyword, and then evaluate a conditional expression. If this expression is false, we skip the body entirely, and then continue on with the rest of the code, whatever that it may be. If the condition evaluates is true, then we'll execute the loop body one time and then come back and reevaluate the conditional expression. And as long as that conditional expression evaluates is true, we'll continue to execute the loop body. So to see how this works, we're gonna use a while loop to output the elements of the Fibonacci sequence, but only those elements that are less than 10. So the Fibonacci sequence is a sequence of numbers where each number in the sequence is the sum of the previous two elements. So to start our example, we're going to define the first two elements as 0 and 1. So I assign the variable a the value of 0, and the variable b the value 1. And for this loop, the variable a is always going to contain the current value in the sequence, and b will always be the next value in the sequence. And this means that our while loop will continue to run or evaluate the loop body as long as the current element in the sequence a is less than 10, which is our goal. So to ensure this, we're going to write the keyword while, and our conditional expression will be a is less than 10. We're then going to need to start a compound statement, which is going to be the body of our while loop. And in this, since a already has the current value of the sequence, we're simply going to output that before computing the next value. And to do that, we're going to use the cat function. So cat a, and then I'm actually going to add an empty string here as a second argument. If you recall, the cat function will concatenate the arguments passed and by default output them to the console. Now, as part of the concatenation, it will actually insert a separator string between every argument. So what this is going to do is it's going to print the value of a followed by the separator, which by default is a space character, and then it's going to print an empty string. And the reason I'm doing this is that during the next iteration, the cat function is going to output its arguments starting right where the last call to this left off printing the sequence that we want all in a single line with spaces between every element. But in any case, at this point, we have output the current value, and now we need to update both a and b. For this, I'm going to employ a temporary variable to hold the value of a, which is the current value. I'm then going to replace a with b, so that we effectively move a to the next value in the sequence. And after this line, a would now hold the new current value in the sequence, and so we need to update b. Now, the value of b, like every other element in the sequence, is the sum of the previous two elements. So those are currently stored in a and our temporary t. So we're going to assign b to be the sum of t and a. And now we've updated both a and b to have the new current value and the new next value. And if we run this code block, we'll see that our loop executed its body seven times and now put the values 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, and 8. And you can easily verify that every element is the sum of the previous two elements in the sequence. Of course, with the first two elements defined to be 0 and 1. So the output here matches our definition of the sequence. And now I want to take a quick look at how this actually worked. The while loop only executed its body when the value in A was less than 10. If we look at the output, we see that obviously here no value is greater than 10. And then the last iteration of the loop body, A started out with the value 8. We see that here in the output. And was updated to have the value 13. Right? This is the sum of 5 and 8. And following the update of A, and of course B, the loop body returned back to conditional expression, which saw that the value of A was now 13, which is clearly not less than 10, meaning the conditional expression was false, causing the loop to exit without executing the loop body once again. The for loop is similar to the while loop, except in R, it's used to iterate through sequences. So, so basically, a for loop will execute a loop body once for every element in the past sequence. If we look at the diagram here, we start with the for keyword. And for every element in the sequence, we're actually going to execute the loop body one time before going back and getting another element from the sequence. And this will continue to happen until the sequence itself is exhausted 
When all the elements in the sequence have been exhausted, the loop then exits. As an example, let's say we were given a vector of floating point values, and we simply wanted to output them one per line. We're going to create a variable x data, and we're going to assign to that our vector of data. And then we're going to write the for keyword, and in parentheses, we'll create a variable for the current element, which we're going to call x. We'll then use the in keyword, followed by our data vector x data. And this syntax is basically going to assign an element in x data to the variable x for every iteration of the loop. And it will do so in the order that the elements appear in x data. So for the loop body, I'm going to construct a compound statement with curly braces. And then I'm going to use the cat function to write out the value of x followed by a new line. And when we run the code block, we see that indeed the values of x data are printed one per line and in the order that they appeared in the original vector. The repeat statement is a little different from the while for statements because it does not have an explicit condition under which it executes its loop body. Instead, it will repeat the execution of its loop body basically forever unless it is explicitly told to stop using the break statement. And we see in the diagram here, we'll begin with the repeat keyword and then repeatedly execute the loop body until the break keyword is evaluated, at which point we exit the loop body wherever this occurs and continue on with the rest of our code. However, how does that actually work? Typically, the break keyword is used in conjunction with an if statement. And because of this, we can actually replicate the way a while loop works using repeat. So let's say we wanted to output the integers 0 through 4. To do this with a repeat loop, we would start by initializing a variable, say x, to be the value 0. We're then going to write repeat and open up the compound statement for the body. And if our goal is to mimic a while loop, then we must have a condition to evaluate first. So Let's say if x is greater than 4, we're going to break, which means we're going to exit the loop the moment x has a value larger than 4. Now, the way the break statement works is as soon as it's evaluated, it actually exits the nearest loop body that encloses it, meaning that this not only stops the current iteration of that loop body, but it skips any remaining iterations that there may have been in that loop. So when the if condition is false, the break statement is not evaluated, and the remainder of the loop is allowed to continue. So to complete this example, we output the current value of x using the cat function, and then we're going to increment the value of x. Right? So the first time we'll write 0, and after the increment statement, we'll write 1, 2, and so on. And then again, once x achieves a value greater than 4, the break statement will evaluate, and this loop will exit. So if we run this code block, we see exactly that. We get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and then finally finished because the loop has exited and the code after the loop was allowed to run. So in this example, functionality is really no different than a while loop. And so you may have the question, why does this exist if I can simply use a while loop? And it's true that in many cases, one can use a while, for, or repeat loop almost interchangeably. And so it will be up to you to decide what works best in your code and hopefully which will allow users of your code to more easily understand what you're trying to achieve. One difference between the while and repeat statements is that the repeat does not force you to check a condition before entry into the loop body. Any conditional checks can actually be delayed until, say, the end of the loop body. And so the repeat statement provides a bit more flexibility than the while statement. In the previous section on the repeat statement, we briefly introduced the break keyword, which allowed us to prematurely exit the nearest containing loop body. There is a similar keyword next, which allows us to prematurely exit the current iteration of the nearest enclosing loop body and skip ahead basically to the next iteration. This is different from the break statement, which not only exits the current iteration, but also skips all remaining iteration. If we look at the two diagrams here, we can see on the left that we've combined and updated the while and for loop diagrams to include both the break and next keywords. And on the right hand side, we see that we've updated the repeat diagram to now include the next keyword. In both diagrams, we see the break keyword exits the loop body and continues on to the code following the loop, while the next keyword returns back to the beginning of the loop body in the case of repeat, or in the case of the while loop, it exits the loop body and reevaluates the conditional expression. And finally, in the for loop, it exits the loop body and gets the next element from the sequence should any exist. 
Now, before demonstrating the next keyword, I did want to give an example again with the break keyword with nested loops. And the reason for this is that I said the break and next keywords exit or skip the current iteration of the closest and closing loop body. So just to drive this point home, let's say I want to output all combinations of elements from two lists. I can do this with a pair of nested for loops. So in the outer loop, we're going to iterate through the values 0, 1, and 2, assigning each one of these to the variable x. Similarly, the inner loop will do the same for y, but for the values 0, 1, 2, and 3. The cat function is then going to write each xy pair to the console, one per line. And of course, when we run this, we see that we get all pairs of values from the two vectors. Now let's say we only wanted values from the second list that were less than two. And so we can add an if statement here that breaks only if the values are greater than one. This would allow only those values that are less than two to actually be output. So when we run the code block, we see here that all the x values, that is those values from the outer loop, still appear in the output, zero, one, and two. While only the values from the inner loop were truncated. This shows that the break statement only stopped the execution of the inner loop, that is the closest in closing loop, to the break keyword. Now to demonstrate the next keyword, we're going to use a for loop to write the even integers between 0 and 10. Now there are obviously more efficient ways to do this, but in this example, the for loop is going to iterate through every integer in the sequence from 0 to 10. The if statement will compute x mod 2, which will result in the integer 0 for even values and 1 for odd values. Since the if statement expects a Boolean, the integers 0 and 1 are coerced into the Booleans false and true, meaning that the next keyword will be evaluated when x is odd, causing the loop to skip to the next iteration, or the next value in the sequence, and the even values will continue the loop and their value is output to the console. So when we run this block, we see exactly that. The even values have been printed and the odd values were not. And this shows us that the next keyword allowed us to skip to the next element in the sequence without exiting the loop, as was the case with the break keyword. 